from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Saturday, October 19th. So we had the moon in Taurus energy until 3.34 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, in which time the moon will go void, of course. And when the moon is void, things are shaky, things are unstable, things are uncertain. And especially coming out of an Earth energy such as Taurus, we are definitely going to feel a destabilization in our foundations, in our mood, in our attitude, in our thoughts, in the structure of our current present moment. So we are going to be shifting into the Gemini energy at 4.08 p.m. Again, Eastern Standard Time. And the transition from Taurus energy to Gemini energy is always a welcomed one. We're coming out of the physical body, out of the present awareness into the mental plane. Now, there is a new level of curiosity that is going to peak. We are rapidly processing new ideas, new perspectives, new information. We are definitely more extroverted than we were over the last couple of days in this Taurus energy, and we're looking out into the world for ideas, for inspirations, for those aha moments. So there are 12 different aspects taking place here today. 11 of them are going to involve the moon. The moon in Taurus energy going to make a positive interaction with Chiron, the wounded healer, who is retrograde in Aries energy, of course, helping us with this new version of self, with seeing this new version of self from a different lens, really analyzing where the old version of self kind of still has some pain, some trauma, some wounds, if you will, that are seeping into this new version of self, but we have a new level of awareness about it. And we're more apt to kind of deal with these particular issues head on. The moon and Chiron working together, definitely giving us an anchored, grounded type of emotional perspective on where it is that, again, we can make a few adjustments, make some few improvements in order to put certain aspects of that old version of self, of the old world that that old version of self had created behind us. Again, we are more open to doing what we have to do to be better and therefore do better as well. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, and blessings, who of course is retrograde in Gemini energy. This is going to bring a level of optimism, a level of confidence to our mood, to our attitude. We're starting to see again where it is that we're reflecting back Jupiter retrograde to old ideas, to old conversations, to old perspectives that we may not have been able to make sense of at that particular moment. But now with a new lens, a new version of self, looking back, we have a new level of awareness, a new level of consciousness that we're operating from. We can definitely see a bigger, broader picture, a bigger understanding of a lot of the things that, again, went way over our heads at the time in which they happened. This is giving us the opportunity to kind of see where it is that in the past we made certain mistakes. We didn't really kind of see where it is that we could make those adjustments, make those improvements. And of course, we're plucking out those silver linings from our past pain, our past trauma, our past situations and circumstances to integrate that wisdom and knowledge into the present moment so that we don't make those same mistakes again. The moon is then going to semi-square, creating a little bit of tension and conflict with the north node in Aries energy, who, of course, is trying to get us on the right path to move on, to move forward, aligning with a new mission, new purpose. We are definitely feeling the tension point, the growing point, if you will, because, again, that north node in Aries wants to project us into the future. The moon in Taurus, however, wants to very much be present, wants to be in the here and now, wants to be very aware of how we're thinking, how we're feeling, how our physical body is responding to some of the ideas that our futuristic selves are definitely percolating on. So attention, this semi-square is highlighting where it is that we're not allowing ourselves to kind of go that far into the future, limiting, restricting us to this present moment, to find the attitude of gratitude for what is going on in this particular moment and circumstance without constantly pushing for new situations, new circumstances, new scenarios. The only aspect that doesn't involve the moon here today is taking place at 2.40 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's between the sun shining a very bright light in this Libra energy as we near the final degrees and Uranus, the great awakener who is retrograde in Taurus energy. 
this is a harsh interaction. This is not going to be favorable. This is going to bring on a jolt of energy that could be manifesting in restlessness, in anxiety, in ants in our pants. There is an illumination, again, sun in Libra energy, where it is that the scales of our lives, either between physical circumstances, relationship dynamics, uh, our inner realm between our heart and our head, there are still some scales that are out of whack, that are not in balance, that are not creating peace, that are not creating harmony. Uranus being retrograde in this Taurus energy is supposed to be highlighting for us where it is that we're holding on to dead weight, where it is that we're kind of, you know, have a death grip on the old, where it is that we've been praying for change, but not doing anything in our physical realm to actually create a space to allow that particular change in. And so the sun kind of, you know, illuminating where it is that we are the problem, where we have to get out of our own way. This is going to shake things up, wake things up, destabilize us in order to actually see where it is that we're holding on to elements, aspects, people, places, and things that, of course, we've all grown, that we have to let go, that we have to put behind us in order to bring stability back into the physical form. The moon is then going to sextile beautiful interaction with Mars, the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desires, even our anger. Mars is in cancer energy. In preservation mode, we are definitely looking to fight, defend, protect what it is that we've already built, what it is that we've already created, what it is that truly matters to us, what we truly value. The moon and Mars kind of working together to again be anchored in our emotions to see where it is that there are certain parts of the past that are working for us, that we do want to hang on to, that we do want to preserve. And so we are kind of getting motivated and inspired in a way to kind of do what we need to do to keep those stable foundations stabilized. Well, again, kind of taking a look at where the elements are changing. Some of those aspects that aren't serving us, that we have outgrown, we can let go of those particular energies, those aspects, those circumstances. And we are kind of tapping into a new warrior type of mood, attitude, spirit, if you will, to do what we have to do to not only protect what it is that we've built and created, but also do we what we have to do to create a space for us to bring new foundations, new structures, new dynamics online. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Saturn, the Lord of Karma, who is retrograde in Pisces energy. We love Taurus and Pisces energy working together in a positive way because whatever it is that we can visualize, whatever it is that we can create in our heart space, in our mind's eye, we're able to actually bring it into form using logic and practicality. Now, of course, Saturn is bringing a little bit of a reality check. We're definitely starting to see where it is that our inner realm is changing between our heart and our head, really analyzing where it is that we're bossing up, empowering ourselves to kind of do better and be better. And of course, realizing where it is that the old belief system has definitely come to pass and that we have to kind of build and create new willpower, new discipline within us to actually see the hard parts through. This is about kind of building new boundaries in our lives in order to protect ourselves, especially from going back to a lot of the things that we fought very hard to get away from. And the moon kind of working with Saturn is giving us a more realistic, organized approach to how it is that we're thinking, how it is that we're feeling, and what it is that we have actually have to do as far as our to-do list here in the physical realm to create a space for the new aspects, the new elements, the new structures, foundations, and routines to actually be built. 10, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, the moon in Taurus energy going to come up to, bump into, team up with, conjunct Uranus, the great awakener, who of course is retrograde in this Taurus energy. This is going to be a revelation of source. We're finally starting to listen to our bodies. We're starting to listen to our heart space, to our head space, especially where there are very important changes that need to be made. We do have needs and those needs are not being met. And because we've recognized that, now it's up to us to do something about it. So here's the thing. This is going to be a low, slow process to first realizing where it is that we've been banging our head against the wall, trying to sweep these particular realizations under the rug. Why would we do that? You may ask. Well, 
Because when you realize that you're not happy, when you realize certain aspects, people, places, and things that are contributing to your unhappiness, then you have the choice to make. Continue doing what it is that you've been doing and settle for what it is that you've already got or do something different and try to create a different result. But of course, if you choose that path, then the responsibility, the accountability of your own damn happiness relies on you. And in that realization, there is a to-do list of hard things that nobody wants to do. And in that realization, then you realize whether or not you're going to shit or get off the pot, so to speak. And so this is a low and slow process of us now finally being aware, finally realizing, finally aligning with the fact that guess what? We have the power and control to make ourselves happy. We have the power and control to make ourselves miserable. We have the power. We have the control. But we're going to need a little bit more patience. This is a great time to just kind of realize the aspects, the elements in our physical realm that do need to change. This is a great time to be thinking outside of the box on where it is that we could be doing better, make some improvements, make some adjustments in order to get a different result. But here's the thing. We're not going to be able to make any of those changes in the present moment. We have to think about it. And with the moon eventually moving into Gemini energy, we're going to have a lot of time to think about it, a lot of new insights, new ideas coming forth that we're going to have to kind of percolate on before we're going to be put in a situation or a circumstance to actually do the hard things that now we know that we need to do. The moon is then going to make a harsh interaction with the sun. And of course, anytime that the sun and the moon are coming together, there's going to be an aha moment and an emotional awareness of what we want, what we need, what we desire, and therefore what we need to do to actually get it. Of course, this is a harsh interaction, which means that the realizations that we are going to be having are going to come out of tension and conflict. There's going to be situations and circumstances, feelings, thoughts, ideas that are going to be very intense that are going to be so uncomfortable that, again, we kind of realize that if we don't make a change, if we don't make any adjustments and improvements, we're going to have these particular thoughts and feelings, this overall discomfort for a long time coming. And so this is going to illuminate, again, sun in Libra energy, where the scales are still out of whack and out of balance in particular areas of our life. And emotionally speaking, where it is that we have been trying to sweep those particular solutions under the rug because we just were not prepared to carry the weight of responsibility and accountability for our own happiness or our own unhappiness. The moon is then going to sextile beautiful interaction with Neptune, who of course is retrograde and is rulership in Pisces energy. This is great because again, we're kind of fine tuning to our higher self. We're tapping into our intuition. We are emotionally kind of receiving some intuitive insights. We are collectively and individually coming up with, I'm going to call it a fantasy. Now, that's where manifesting starts is fantasizing or imagining a different realm, a different reality that you could be living in. And then you back it with an emotion that makes you feel excited enough to actually pursue said goal, vision, and dream. And then you add planning, you add strategy, you add logic and rationality to it to see how it is that you're actually going to take action and make moves to bring this particular vision to life. So manifesting is more than just sitting back and having a hope, a wish, a dream, and just expecting it to happen. It actually does require an equation. That's why it's very important to know your elemental energy profile. And it all starts with a vision. So this particular energy is, again, kind of helping us to refine that particular vision, emotionally kind of support what that vision would actually feel like. And this is the very beginning of us kind of planning and strategizing for some of the changes, some of the adjustments, some of the improvements that we know that we need to make. The moon is then going to try and beautiful interaction with Pluto. Pluto, of course, at the final degrees of Capricorn energy. This is Earth on Earth action. Earth helps us to see where in our physical realm that there is an opportunity for change, for improvement, where it is that there are some options now emerging. And because this is a powerful, powerful aspect, there's going to be a boss up in our mood and our attitude. We are rising to the challenge, so to speak. We are seeing where it is that we have the ability to take power and control back over our lives and that we are tapping into our creator abilities. And again, that comes with a huge responsibility 
And again, we are kind of, I'm going to say bossing up, feeling a little bit more prepared to kind of honor what those particular responsibilities are actually going to mean for us. It is at this particular juncture, 3.34 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, that the moon is going to go void, of course. We lock into that Gemini energy at 4.08 p.m., again, Eastern Standard Time. 8.30 p.m., we are going to have the moon. Now in this Gemini energy, sit across from directly oppose Venus, who is fresh in this Sagittarius energy. Of course, Venus just shifted into this Sag energy shortly after the full moon in Aries popped off just a couple of days ago. If you haven't listened to that particular Asha forecast, if you haven't captured how your heart space has definitely changed in vibration and energy in weight over the last couple of days, I'm definitely going to recommend that, of course, you bust out your October energy guide specifically tailored for your zodiac sign so that you understand where these particular energy shifts are going to be impacting your life the most. The moon sitting across from Venus, we are at odds with our own damn selves, with our heart space. Of course, Venus now in the Sag energy, she's in explorer mode. She's in experimenting mode. She is just, you know, living a little bit, I'm going to say of a higher vibe. She has a little bit more freedom in her heart space. She's not as heavy and weighed down. The problem is, is that the exploration, the experimentation that we now want to do in our physical realms Emotionally speaking, we just are not informed enough. Of course, that Gemini energy is all about the mental plane, all about the information that we have, our ability to kind of understand the options, the opportunities that we have in our heart space and our head space to make those changes. Therefore, we just haven't had enough time to think about the changes, the improvements, the adjustments that we now are wanting to make. And so we're going to be at odds with what it is that we want to do versus what it is that we need to do in order to continue kind of working on bringing peace, harmony and balance back into our lives. But at the same time, build upon kind of expand upon what we know is going to make our heart a little bit more happy. 918 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the moon and the sun are coming together again. This time it is a positive interaction. This is air on air energy, which means that intellectually speaking, there's going to be a lot going on in our headspace. We are going to start weighing the pros and cons of some of the new ideas that are coming online. We are going to start weighing the pros and cons of the options and opportunities that we're now starting to see presenting themselves before us. Emotionally speaking, again, there's a lot of curiosity really bouncing around from one idea to the next with this Gemini energy. And of course, the sun shining very bright light and this Libra energy, hella indecisive still. But we are gaining a little bit more insight, a little bit more momentum, if you will, on how it is that we are going to bring new inner dialogues, inner narratives, new ideas online and really kind of experiment with whether or not that is something that we should be doing something that we should be pursuing. So there's going to be an aha moment of some sort that is going to lead us to kind of seeing where it is that there's a new idea, new epiphany popping off on how it is that we could create the peace, harmony, the balance in our lives that we're currently lacking.